going right through the edge. Well, it's not right by you. It's like yeah. cards are yeah, it's showing them. Yeah. They have this for sale and they didn't get it sold, so they're gonna put it back after they uh, get into it. Yeah. Yeah.
substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And this is the will of him that sent me, and everyone that seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and will raise up, raise him up at the last day. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And that this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. These things I have written unto that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and the eternal life. Good morning. I am glad to be with you this morning, but I have to confess. My son left for his baseball game this morning before I left the house to come here. They had to be at the park by 7.30 over in St. Peter's today. And so I want to check Game Changer really bad right now. That's kind of where I'm at. I was showing Brenda and, and Jack what Game, game Changer is this really cool app now that it, it shows you like a baseball field and where people are playing, who's at bat. When a pitch comes in, you can see strikes and balls and stuff like that. And so I know he's about to be up. Kim texts me. And so right before I walked up here, I'm like, why did you do that? Now I want to know how he does. <sighs> so that's where I'm at. But we started a new series uh, of lessons last week. And uh, it was rather interesting. We, we went about it a little bit differently uh, than I, I usually do lessons. I think I read about 60 scriptures last week. And I was just trying to really overemphasize the point that throughout the New Testament, there's a category of scriptures that God, that, 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 that the writers of the, the New Testament give us that are called one another scriptures. And they say things over and over and over and over again, love one another, encourage one another, serve one another. And they're just, they're, they're, they're all over the place. And so we started this new series that we're calling one another unto others. Because we know that when you were little, probably something that your grandmother told you was to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Grandma and Jesus have a lot of the same wisdom. And, but the problem that I get into sometimes is I just don't know, I don't know what I want, right? I don't care how you treat me. I do, but that's what I say. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if you like me. I don't care what you think about me, but I do. And so as, we're, as I was thinking about this and as I was trying to figure out what I wanted to say is I thought, well, when I don't know what I want, the New Testament tells me, here's how you should treat other people. So what we're going to learn over the next few weeks is how I can one another, right? You pick your verb serve one another, love one another, spur one another on, unto others. Right? When I don't know what to do, we're going to take a page out of the New Testament. And so what we're going to talk about today is pray for one another. I feel for my son right now because he's been playing really, really well. And he's been hitting, hitting the baseball really, really hard. And in most cases, it ends up right at somebody. In his last six, seven, eight, nine at-bats, he's like one for seven, no strikeouts, just hammering the baseball. And last night was no exception. 
Uh, one of his at bats, he hit a, a killer line drive. And I don't know when this team picked up Michael Jordan for a shortstop, but this kid had to have jumped four feet off the ground to catch the ball. It was just, it was an amazing play that he made. And then in the second game that he played last night, he hit this ball into right center field that if it would have got through, it would have been a triple. No, no, no question about it. And this center fielder comes and makes a diving catch. And I'm like, where did these kids come from? This is, this is, he's, he's got the worst luck going on right now. And so as we were talking, um, is that, 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 in the middle of the day, because it wasn't just last night this has been happening to him, um, there was this weird thing that happened. He got to play for his old team yesterday morning, and then he played for his, his current team last night. Um, but the coach of the team they played, uh, of the opposing team they played yesterday morning, I heard come up to the coaches of the team that I used to coach and say, hey, when this game's over, I'd like to get all the boys together and, and, and pray. And I thought, that's weird. Right? This is baseball. Right? What are we doing? And so, but, but our coach goes, we need all the prayers we can get. Yes, because they're not playing very good right now. And so they, did out there, they went out there and did that. And on the way home, Caleb and I were, were, were on the way to the, to the next set of games. Caleb and I were talking about that. And he goes, and if I have a night like I've been having, I think I'm going to get up early tomorrow and pray about it. My response to my embarrassment was, I don't think it works like that, bud. And he goes, I think that's exactly how it's supposed to work. And God said to me, when did you stop praying about the small things? Because for me, this is a, I mean, it's a small thing. We're talking about a baseball game. But this is his whole world right now. It's all he thinks about. He wakes up thinking about baseball, thinking about his batting average. He goes to bed watching YouTube videos and how he can get better. It's his whole world. When did you stop caring about, when did you stop praying about the small things, Chris? And I don't know that I actually did, but it was really convicting for me. Because it's easy to get discouraged. We pray for people to get better, and sometimes they don't get better. That's a big thing. Right? We pray for people to get healed. We pray for people to come to know Jesus. We pray for work. And sometimes it doesn't seem to get better. And so in, when we look at the big things that we pray for, that it doesn't seem to make a difference sometimes, it's easy to forget about praying for the small things. It's easy to minimize what somebody else thinks is a big thing. May we never be people that do that. Because like I said, this is, it, it, this is his whole world right now. And sometimes... I'll confess, when people ask me to pray for them, I'm more than happy to, but I'm thinking, this? This is what you want me to? It doesn't, this doesn't seem like that. It's their whole world. It's what they can't get off their minds right now. And we can't minimize that for people. I can't minimize that for people. And so it's this morning, it's why I wanted to talk about initially when you don't know what else to do, when you don't know do unto others as you would have them do unto you, I would like you to pray for me. And I forget to ask for that sometimes. And you probably do too. So we want to pray for one another. We want to, unto, we want to one another unto others. We want to pray. We want to pray. And so what I want to talk about this morning is a prayer, ironically, that I taught my kids when they were little. You're not going to find this prayer in Scripture, but we're going to look at the different, the different little parts of it. They are rooted in Scripture. And the prayer goes like this. Lord, today, give me thick skin. Give me a strong mind. Give me a soft heart. And give me hands that are quick to serve. Because what I was trying to do for my kids was boil down what I thought was the most important thing for them when they were four, five, six, seven years old about what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. And followers of Jesus should have thick skin. Right? That's where we're going to start. We should have thick skin. We need to have thick skin because people in life don't play fair. 
right? When they were little and they were going to school, I've told you before Haley had a bully, right? I've told you yeah, uh, uh, um, Caleb at times won't stand up for himself. And it was not like physically, but he st- I turned things in. I can see a grade on it. Take it back to your teacher. They told me I didn't, they told me I didn't do it. No, 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 bud. This is something. I can't do this for you. Take it back in. Show them. You did grade this. Here it is. No, no, no. He, he won't stand up for himself. Lord, give us thick skin. There's this uh, couple of sports stories this morning. There's this referee that I just, that, that I try to teach my kids respect authority. Things are going to happen. Life's not always going to be fair. But there seems to be this guy that just hates Haley. And, and it's extremely funny to me because you get to see all this personality come out of this little bitty body that you would not expect to be there. And this guy, he, he calls these fouls on her that are, he, what he's calling is a reaching foul, which I don't know if you know what that is or not. It's a made-up term. It's not an actually foul, foul in the book. But it's when you reach in and you make unnecessary contact with the person who's got the ball in their hands. Right? You can reach in and grab the ball, which seven, eight, nine times out of ten is what she does. But any time she reaches in, and we learned last night that it's not just her. She's hurt right now, so she was watching another game playing, and she watched the other team's coach get a technical foul, which was she thought was really funny. But every time she reaches in and grab, tries to grab the ball, this guy calls a reaching foul on her. And you can see her get her fired up. This is the only time in a long time, let's be honest, maybe in a year, that I've talked to the referee from the stands. And I just said, look, she's not touching her at all. Why are you calling the foul? And the guy wouldn't talk to me, wouldn't acknowledge it, which is fine. But I'm like, there's, z- there's zero contact that's going on, and I'm wanting to freak out, right? And, and you can see her getting madder and madder. It's the only time she's falling out of, fouled out of a game is with this, with this guy um, uh, refereeing the game. And so afterwards, we were talking about it, and I'm just, look, you're, you're going to have to change how you play whenever this guy's the referee, which stinks because that's her game. She plays a very quick, a very fast-paced game. She's smart. She makes good passes. She doesn't make a lot of points, but she's a setup person, and she gets a lot of steals in this manner. And so it really handicaps her. And what, what, what we talk about is, look, you're just you're going to have to have thicker skin. You're going to have to play differently because life and people, they don't always play fair. It doesn't always go according to the rules. You know that at work. How many times at work have you said, this, this, this isn't right? This isn't fair. This is not the way this should be going down. Right? There, this, at, at, at work this week, I, I, I don't often go to a customer's house to fix something. I usually get it to a dealership so I can fix seven or eight cars at one time rather than fixing one here and one here and one here and one here. Um, but they really needed me to take care of this. And so I went out to a customer's house and took care of it. And it was high on the driver's side, so not in the line of sight. And it turned out perfect, like as, it good as, as, as good as it possibly could turn out. Now, when you fix glass, it doesn't come out perfectly crystal clear. The only way you can get that is to put a new windshield in your car. But if you buy a car that's 12 years old, they're not going to put a new windshield in the car unless it's got a big line going across it. So they call me and send me out to fix it. And for what I do, it, it looks it looks it looks great. And she called me after I left, and she goes, "So is it gonna is it gonna go com- no go completely away? No, no. Well, this is unacceptable. I don't know. You're talking to the wrong person right here. You know, you need to call back to you call the car dealership. Well, I am, and I'm going to complain because this is terrible. And I'm thinking. <laughs> You don't, you don't understand what you're saying right now. And it took, I mean, I want to, again, I want to freak out on the, right? Because what she's saying is that I'm doing a bad job and I'm not doing a bad job. And you've been there. That you've done everything right. You did it to the best of your ability. It turned out, couldn't have been, couldn't have been better. And somebody walked up and poo-pooed on it. The followers of Christ, we've got to have thick skin. Especially when we live in a society that's reactionary, that's looking for an I gotcha moment.
So as I was thinking about that and how I wanted to talk about this, this thought popped in my head. What got under Jesus' skin? People trashing or, or corrupt, corruption in his dad's house. Started flipping tables and that, that deal. But other than that, what got under Jesus' skin? A couple of nails. A couple of nails got under his skin. A flog got under, a cat of nine tails got under his skin. A crown of thorns being shoved on it. Aside from that physical stuff at the end, it doesn't seem like much got, got, got under Jesus' skin. And even with the stuff that actually did get under Jesus' thick skin, he was the guy that stood up there and said, God, they don't know what they're doing. Father, they don't know what they're doing. That's what thick skin looks like. Thick skin looks like when you're being treated unfairly, when somebody you know is being treated unfairly. I'm secure in who I am. I don't have to react. I don't have to respond. I don't have to let how you're treating me affect how I treat you. That's what thick skin looks like. And that's how Jesus lived. And it's how I've tried to teach my kids to live. When you're being treated unfairly, it's official, play better. Don't give them a reason to call a foul. When your friends are treating you unfairly at school, you got to walk away. I know it's not cool, but you got to walk away. We've got to be people that develop thick skin. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, think about this. Jesus is the guy who said, when somebody smacks you on one cheek, give them the other cheek. He said, my people need to be people that don't react. They've got thick skin. And so that's where our prayer started. When you go to school today, I want you to have thick skin. I want you to have thick skin. But we didn't stop there. We moved from thick skin. God, give us thick skin because life and people don't pray fair. To Father, give us strong minds. Because we want to pe- we want to be a people. We want to be a family that's never that never feels defeated. We can always find a possibility, right? This is what God says about Himself, or what Paul says about God, that we serve the God of hope. That there's always something good that can come out of it. That, the, that we're, we are never down and out. That we're always able to find a win. God, give us strong minds. Give us thick skin. God, give us strong minds. Right? He wrote a whole book. Of the, we have a whole book of the Bible called Proverbs. That are about how we can do better at life. How we cannot be, find ourselves defeated. I find this verse in Exodus so interesting. In Exodus 4, 9 and 10, it says this. Now, this is happening right before the, before, um, uh, right after the burning bush, God is talking to to, to, to Moses and he says, I want you to go back and to free your people. And he goes, here's, here's, here's the plan. It says, then the Lord said, if they don't believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they don't believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground. The water you take from the river will become blood on the ground. Now, if you remember, the first sign was he had this stick that he carried with him. And when he threw it on the ground, it became a snake. And whenever he went and picked it up, it became a staff again. Okay, that's the first sign. The second one that he said is is God said to Moses, put your hand in your sleeve. And when you pull it out, it's going to be all leprous. And then when you put it in there again and pull it back out, it's going to be clean again. He go, God goes to Moses. He goes, look, they might believe the stick thing. They might not. If that don't work, we're going to try something else. If, they don't, if the stick thing don't work, try the leprous thing. If that don't work, we're going to try the blood thing. We're going to find something that works. 
we're not going to get defeated. We're going to find a way to win. And I love this principle until they try to apply it on Kim and I, right? Trying to find, no, we're just, we're not doing that. I don't care what you say. We're not, right? But, but we want to have thick skin. We want to have sharp minds. God says we're going to try one thing and it doesn't work. We're going to try another, right? Second Peter 3.18, we looked at this verse a couple of weeks ago. It says, but grow in the grace and in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, grow your mind, get smarter, strengthen that muscle. I like this verse in, in, in Acts 17. Acts 17, Paul has been on a journey and he shows up in Athens, the place that when you hear about Greek mythology, where this came from, and you think about Zeus and you think about Hermes and Poseidon, those guys. And he shows up and he finds a Jewish synagogue and it says, as was his custom, he went into the synagogue and on, uh, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that Jesus was who he said he was. It says he reasoned with them. He gave them logical arguments. It wasn't just, just you should believe. He gave them something substantial. Paul had a sharp mind, a strong mind. And when one thing failed, he tried something else. See, we've got to be people that, that, that have thick skin because life and people don't play fair. But we've got to have a strong mind because it's so easy to get discouraged. It's so easy to feel helpless, right? When we, you get told, don't leave the house. Stay home. You can't do anything. You can't work. You can't. What do I do? We've got to find a way to find a win. Paul, uh, uh, Jesus says that I, I want my followers to have strong minds. I want you to have thick skin. I want you to have strong minds. I want you to have soft hearts. So that what's most important to my Heavenly Father is what's most important to me. We want to have soft hearts. God, give us thick skin. Give us strong minds. Give us soft hearts. See, people don't play fair sometimes because they've got their own objectives, right? I root, pray for the Cardinals. Jeff roots, prays for the Cubs, right? Who does God love more? Depends on the season, right? This year, it looks like he loves the Cardinals a little more, right? And so, it, it, but, but we, there's opposing sides that happen. But we're also a world at war. And so sometimes it's not just my ver motives versus your motives. Sometimes other people's motives are being persuaded by the enemy, by Satan. And when we're called to go to battle against that, right, there's certain things that, that you find important. There's certain maybe political agendas that you find important and you've got a scripture for it. Right? When that happens and you're going, I'm, 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 this is a battle that I'm, I'm going to fight for God, we're not called to win the battle. We're called to win the person. And we've got to have soft hearts towards the people that we're supposed to have thick skin against. See, what we want to do, what I, well, I'll speak for myself, what I want to do, especially my kids' sporting events, is I want to have a hard heart and thin skin. And God says, that's exactly backwards to what I need you to have. Because you're not trying to win this fight. You're trying to win this person. And so I need you to have thick skin and a soft heart. That's how we win people. We don't get hard towards them and don't get callous towards them. We have thick skin, but then a soft heart back at them. In Mark 6, 34, it says this. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. I started thinking about this imagery. Jesus looked with his heart, not just with his eyes. 
This wasn't something that he could turn a blind eye to. His heart got involved. His heart saw it. What breaks your heart? Is it the same thing that breaks God's heart? But I was thinking about this imagery. What do sheep without a shepherd look like? Right? The wool's probably overgrown and dirty. They're probably injured. Right? That's what I would think. Right? And in a lot of ways, I think that describes people that are far from God. They're neglected. They feel lonely. They may have friends. They may feel abused. But I think sometimes us inside the church, another way that maybe they feel sheep without a shepherd is directionless, purposeless. They don't make a difference. And it said Jesus looked at us and he had compassion on us. He had a soft heart towards us. Right? Lord, give us thick skin because life and people don't play fair. Give us a strong mind so we can always find a win. Give us a soft heart so that what breaks my heart or what breaks your heart is what breaks my heart. And then finally, give us quick hands to serve. In 1 Peter 4.10 it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. Whatever gift that you've received. He says, I want you to do that as a faithful steward of God's grace in, your, in its various forms. Because God gave you something to be able to use on somebody else. It wasn't just for you. Whether you're good at sewing, you're good at kids, you're good at bookkeeping. God gave you something. God gave you a one another for you to do unto others. Back in, I don't know if I, I don't know if I've told you this story or not, but back when we first tried to start a kids church in our house, we were we, we spent a lot of time talking about things that we could do in our community. And one of the little boys that came, his mom told me this story that, that um, he had looked out a window and saw one of his neighbors raking up, raking the yard, trying to get those dumb little spiky balls things out of their yard. And, and so he asked if he could get a rake and go out and help them. And, and so I thought, I mean, that's exactly what we're, we're trying to get. And so they uh, he said that the, 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 the dad had looked out and saw a son out there helping and thought that was weird. And so he went out there and then it wasn't very much longer. And he was out there with a rake helping the neighbor, too. And so what the mom eventually came and said to me is, I didn't know sending my kid to your church was going to cause so much work for me. This is it's, it's, it's what we're, she was. It was in jest, but it's what we're talking. Right. God gave you gifts. God, whether it's just I, I noticed an, a problem that's out there. God, give us quick hands to serve, right? Whatever grace God has given you, he wants you to use it to serve others. Paul says it like this in Galatians chapter 5. He says, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. You're free. You have freedom in Christ. But don't use that just to get what you want out of life. Use it to serve your neighbor. He says, for the entire law is summed up in keeping this one command. We've been looking at this. To love your neighbor as yourself. Right? So if we're going to be people that one another unto others, right? If you know how you want to be treated, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, great, you go with that, because that's what, that's what Jesus said. But you're going, I just, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help somebody. We're going to start with, I'm going to pray for one another unto others. Let's do that right now.
Dear Heavenly Father, my prayer for our church is that you make us a people that have thick skin, God. God, you make us a people that just aren't tossed around in the storms of life. But we are a people that are secure in you, whether it's just crazy circumstances or whether it's just how people are treating us, God. That you make us a people of thick skin because you need some stability in our community, God. God, I pray that you make us a people that decide that we're going to learn and grow and learn and become better and learn. God, that you give us strong minds. Minds that don't give up on what's right. That fight for what's right. But not with the weapons of the world. God, help us like Paul to present logical arguments to people. To not be afraid to talk to people. God, give us strong minds that always, that have the mindset that we're, we're always going to find a win. God, help us to be people that have soft hearts, God. God, not thin skin and hard hearts. Help us to be a people that have thick skin, strong minds, and soft hearts. God, help us to become the type of people that what breaks your heart is what breaks our hearts. God, that we see people as for, for, for who they are. God, whether they're a sheep without a, are they sheep without a shepherd, whether it's just they're broken, they're lonely. God, in a lot of ways, just like we are. God, help us to have soft hearts towards those people. And God, finally, help us to have quick hands that serve. God, help us to be people that when we see a need, when we see somebody struggling, when we know our neighbor's going through it, God, that we're there. Because that's what you, how you, what you call your people to do. God, help what's on your heart to be what's on ours. And help us to be a people that pray for others as we're learning how to one another unto others. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
the oh, yeah. 21 days. Okay, so we want to have your reporting or something? I, I don't know. know. She she knows just go Thursday. Thursday. But I think just an IV. She knows yeah. Thursday at yeah. that oh, clock in Jacksonville. Okay. And I said it's an hour and a half to two hours. Okay. Every 21 days. Oh, so it's Every 21 days. So it's beginning right now. Let's see how this works. Right. Being her first 